Friends, welcome to this time of worship. I'm Ryan Bradney, pastor here with First Presbyterian Church, Winchester. Thankful to share with you um, as part of this Holy Week uh, together. Uh, we share this service together with uh, our friends, our brothers and sisters from uh, First Christian Church, Disciples of Christ uh, here in Winchester. It's a blessing to have uh, Dr. Jerry Johns here with us uh, bringing uh, the message. Um, this service, uh, we may remember, or maybe uh, we are reminded, uh, or hearing this for the first time, that we'll see that Monday Thursday is paradoxical uh, in many ways. Uh, it embodies a celebratory, somber atmosphere, but also a somberly celebrative service. We are thankful uh, to be with you. Um, our hymns this evening, uh, later in the service, um, hymn number uh, 329 in the Presbyterian hymnal, Break Thou Bread of Life. It's our first hymn, and our, our final hymn is hymn number 101, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Friends, we are joined together in this time of worship with our call to worship. Come, Lord Jesus, you too were tired when day was done. You met your friends at the evening time. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus, you too enjoyed when nights drew on. You told your tales at the end of the day. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus, you kindled faith when lamps were low. You opened scriptures, broke the bread, and shed your light as darkness fell. Come, Lord Jesus, meet us here. Friends, God knows our needs before we ask, and in our asking, prepares us to receive the gift of grace. Let us open our lives to God's healing presence, letting go of all that separates us from God and neighbor. Friends, please join me in a unison prayer of confession. Let us pray. God of grace and mercy, you create a new order for our lives, service before success, faith before knowledge, partnership over independence, the cross over the crown. Forgive us when we fall into the patterns of this world, rejecting your call through our action or inaction. Forgive us, God, and move us to see the world in the light of your great love. Forgive us, God, 
and grant us peace. We now offer our silent confession before God. Hear the good news. Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone. A new life has begun. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Friends, let us pray. God, as your spirit moves through the days of this week and through the events which come to our attention, we ask that you Help us to see and to experience how you are already drawing near to us. Even in our most difficult and challenging hours in our lives. Whenever and wherever they may be. We call to mind with thanks all the ways that you provide for us through your word through your presence in the world. We thank you for those who in the past or right now stand as examples of your humble love, committed faith, and service together with you and with others, helping us to experience new possibilities, even in the midst of challenge. O oh God, our challenges, as you know, are many in these times. How we miss and long to be more in the presence physically with each other. We pray for the healing and well-being of Clark County, of Kentucky, of this nation and across the world. We pray for the effectiveness of the vaccine and for all things that we can join and participate in through our daily acts of humble service and commitment to you and to the possibilities that you bring through Christ to be a more whole community than before this last year began. Oh God, we rejoice and we give thanks that though the events of this week will draw dark, that there is a light ahead. There is a new day dawning, and yet help us to not move too hastily to overlook the costly sacrifice of which Jesus made for all of us. He guides us. He guides us in the way that we should go and teaches us, teaches us many things, teaches us what our lives are to be about and in so embodied in the prayer that he taught us to pray saying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins 
as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. From Psalm 116, verses 1 and 2, 12 through 19. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the pe- I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people in the courts of the house of the Lord in your midst O Jerusalem praise the Lord the word of the Lord thanks be to God A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 17, and then 31b to 35. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know what I am doing, but later you will, you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set for you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, said Jesus, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, 
Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The word of the Lord. Our next reading is from Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth, chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. And Paul writes to the church at Corinth, For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Today is Thursday of Holy Week, Maundy Thursday. Maundy is derived from the Latin word for mandate, commemorating Jesus' new commandment to the disciples that they should love one another which we just read in the gospel text for this evening. By the love they show for one another, says Jesus, people will know that they are followers of Jesus. Monday Thursday is also the day we remember that Jesus knelt on the ground before his disciples, tied a towel around his waist and washed their feet, thus showing them that even though he is Lord of all creation, he is also a servant to all. And Monday Thursday is also the day we remember the night Jesus gathered in the upper room to share his last meal before his execution with his beloved disciples. Now in some churches across the world, and even right here in Kentucky, there is a ritual foot washing that takes place annually on Monday Thursday. Regular church people go to their churches, take off their shoes and socks, and wash the feet of their neighbor. Farmers and bankers, attorneys and fast food workers, stay-at-home parents and diggers of ditches, they all, one by one, slowly wash the feet of their neighbors. It is, to say the least, an intimate and vulnerable thing to wash the feet of another and to sit still while somebody washes your feet. My faith tradition, the Christian Church Disciples of Christ, has Scottish Presbyterian roots that we share with our Presbyterian sisters and brothers here at First Presbyterian Church in Winchester. Our denominational symbol, the red chalice with the cross of St. Andrew, pays homage to our Scotch Presbyterian heritage. We have much in common with the Presbyterians, thanks to the work of Alexander and Alexander Campbell and his colleague Barton Stone, who pastored the Cane Ridge, what was then the Presbyterian Church, just 16 miles from where we are today. I know from my long association with my Presbyterian colleagues that communion, that Eucharist, that the celebration of the Lord's Supper is special and held in high esteem and celebrated generally once a month or once a quarter in Presbyterian churches, but absolutely on the high holy days. Our Christian celebration of the Eucharist reminds us of the night that Jesus gathered with his dearly beloved in that upper room and he took his last meal. For we who are a part of the Christian church disciples of Christ, that final meal shared by Jesus and his disciples means a great deal to us. Alexander Campbell and Barton Stone were our Calvin and Knox. They believed that the earliest first century churches, according to scripture, met for communion weekly, and so they encouraged us to continue that tradition. So every Sunday, at First Christian Church and in Disciples churches across the world, you will find a celebration of the Lord's Supper. But the truth is, we have communion just about every time we get together to worship for any reason. It's that important to us. 
My church members often say they could do very well without the sermon as long as they have communion. I'm certain that is no reflection on my preaching. During Holy Week, the celebration of communion on Monday, Thursday takes on a large significance for we who commit ourselves to a life of faith. This whole week was designed by the earliest of church leaders to teach congregants about the last week of the life of Jesus. And Thursday night was his last meal. That alone makes it important. But what he did and what he said during the meal raises its significance to another level. The tradition of and about the Lord's Supper had been handed down to Paul as an apostle. By the time he was writing to the church in Corinth about the year 55, the significance of the celebration had grown in all of the churches in the area. Its importance to the practice of faith is obvious in the words he writes, for I receive from the Lord what I also then handed on to you that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. There's some very important themes in Paul's words. The first is that Paul is handing on to the Corinthian church what he had already himself been given. And so there was already a tradition of celebrating communion in the early church. And when that tradition is observed, the bread is broken and reminds us that Jesus' body was broken. The cup is shared which is symbolic of the blood which flowed from the body of Jesus at the crucifixion. And when we break this bread and when we drink this cup, we are to do so in remembrance of Jesus. Now church, if you'll allow me just a few brief more minutes, I wanna talk about this specific word, remember, and then I'll sit down. Remember is a compound word in English. A member is a part of a body. We call our arms and our legs members. We call people who belong to the body of Christ members. To dismember someone is to remove a limb from them or to remove them from the church role. To remember them then is to join them back with the body. And it implies that in saying it, that they have become somehow separated from the body because you don't remember something that isn't de-membered. In terms of our memory, we are de-membered from an event by the passage of time. Remembering a memory brings that event, that person into the present moment so that we relive it, we recall it, we re-experience what happened long ago in the present moment. Remembering then brings the past forward so that it is present in the moment with us. It brings Jesus here, now. He's present. He is among us. In the bread and in the cup, we see him. He is standing next to us at the welcome table. Today is Maundy Thursday of Holy Week. In the same way Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room, he is still among us today. We eat, we drink, we remember. We bring into the present moment the saving acts and presence of the risen Christ. And in sharing the elements with one another and partaking of the bread and the cup, we experience his presence in this very moment. this 
is not a Presbyterian table, a Disciples of Christ table. This is the Lord's table. He invites all of us. This is for you, but it may change you from one who is anxiously concerned about their own redemption into one who knows that Christ's body is here on earth, of which we are restored as part, into knowing that we are not redeemed by our being good, but by our being connected to Christ, into knowing that daring to eat at the table of Jesus Christ has unimaginable consequences. So we come. We come to be made whole, to participate in the world, and love together with him, with each other, with his body. Friends, there on the night before he was led to the cross, there, table, a table that he shared many times with his disciples, he took bread breaking it, saying, this is my body broken for you. Every time you eat this, do so in remembrance of me. In the same way there that night after supper, he took the cup, pouring it out, saying, every time you drink this cup, you do so in remembrance of me. This cup is poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Friends, with whatever simple elements, bread and cup that you have where you are, um, we invite you to share with us uh, in, this, in this feast that at, at our tables, Christ table, that he might meet us where we are. Let us pray now. Uh, over what over which we share at the, at our tables together in the spirit of the Lord's table. Let us pray. O oh God, send now your spirit upon these elements of which you have created. We rejoice in what we are receiving. Uh, we rejoice in the word that that Christ gives to us, his teachings, his example. Help us to remember the events of this week, which are to shape our lives and how we lead them for you. God bless them as we share in them now together in spirit. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, the body of Christ. Let us be in prayer together. We thank you, God, for inviting us to your welcome table, where we have remembered your Son, our Lord, and have experienced the presence of the risen Christ. We pray now, strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and let our lives be a living example of your love for each and every child of God. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
Friends of God, go into the world doing what the Lord requires, living with kindness and justice, walking your path humbly with God, and may God bless you, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit, both now and forevermore. Amen.